Hi! Welcome to the 3D Pen Den! When I first started working with 3D Pen, the thing that bothered me a bit was that all the finished surfaces looked more or less like this one. Rough and blobby. And judging from how quickly everyone started to smooth, sand and paint, I was not the only one who was bothered by this. Sometimes it is just what you want, but one should have a choice. If I want polka dots on my surface, I should be able to get polka dots. Smoothing and sanding is definitely an option, but it is quite time consuming and I'm always looking for more options. I like options. PLA takes fine details so perfectly that it would be a shame not to use this feature of the material. Yes, you have to do it while the piece is still flat. But the good news is that you can shape it later without disturbing the texture. Sometimes it is nice to have textural variety on one project. So let's consider our options and stay with me till the end for troubleshooting, tool tips and the gallery of results. First we'll need a nice solid chunk of PLA. This is a bit tedious part of the process because you have to basically become a human 3D printer. And I'm wondering if this part could actually be better done on a 3D printer. But I don't have one so I can't try it. Those of you who do own one, if you try this please leave me a note in the comments as to how it worked. It would be interesting to know. You can't have any holes in it or they will cause trouble later. So do a double layer. Also you need certain thickness to have something to print into. Now we need to melt it a bit. I use tile and silicone baking mats for this. The time and temperature will depend on your particular equipment, so take this only as a ballpark and go by your own results. While it's baking, we need to oil our printing tool so it doesn't stick to the hot plastic. This process is a bit hard on your stamps so you may want to use just a few dedicated stamps before you get a handle on this process. firmly once and remove the stamp immediately. If you let it cool down with the stamp in it, the plastic will shrink around the rubber grooves and you may not be able to get it off without damaging the stamp. Next, pull it off the hot tile to cool it as quickly as possible so the image stays as crisp as possible. Once the plastic cools down to the point where it's no longer sticky, cover it with another cold tile to speed the cooling process and to prevent any possible warping. Here we go, nice and crisp. get 
most of embossing textures, it is helpful to highlight them with some kind of patina. I like to use alcohol soluble inks for that, but acrylic inks or any thin acrylic paint will do. dry, send off the high areas to reveal the lines in the original contrasting color of the plastic. Before you go try this, a few important points. PLA is made from organic materials, so it should be just like baking cookies. But I don't really know what all else is in it. So use as many ventilating measures as you can and possibly wear a respirator. Now, if you do a sloppy job and make just one layer with lots of gaps, it may bake like this, distort it with holes and you won't be able to stamp it at all. One of the ways to prevent any surprises beforehand is to iron the piece before the baking step. Between two layers of parchment, real parchment, not wax paper. If you do an excellent printing job, you may not need this step at all but if you start having some issues with holes or distortion, this may help. 3D pens are a relatively new technology, so we don't have the benefit of the industry making embossing tools especially designed for us yet. But the good news is there are plenty of other arts and crafts tools made for other disciplines to borrow from. Rubber stamps are an obvious start. This is a graining comb for painting fall wood textures. The most important feature we need from our embossing tools, other than the texture, is that they can withstand the heat of the baked plastic. So don't use anything made of plastic that will melt. In this case, stick with the rubber one. Texturing plates for polymer clay are also a good option. But again, use only the rubber ones, not the plastic ones. I melted a few of those. When you print with something that is not mounted on a printing block, use some other flat pressing tool for the printing step to achieve an even pressure. A good guide whether it will be able to take the heat is if it's made for a hot process like soap making or candle making. Here are some texturing plates for soap making and soap is molded while it's in its hot melted state. So the tools for that are often made from silicone which is a good news for us. Cake baking and candy making supplies are also often made from silicone and you wouldn't believe the variety of patterns and textures made for that. Here is one silicone tool made just for the 3D pen crowd. 3D made matte. Especially this corner segment is good for embossing.
And here is a random pot holder. Any textured silicone is a friend of mine. Here a silicone baking mat meets silicone texturing plate. The beauty of this process is that the plastic sticks to the silicone while it's hot. So I can actually invert the bake mat while I'm printing if I need to without the piece falling off in the process. Another material where the heat is not a problem is anything made of metal. There is a variety of brass stencils for embossing paper. Then there are metal stamps for embossing leather which happen to come with a handy alphabet set. Or just any random textures from your hardware store can be surprisingly helpful. This is how that works. Finally, you can also take a piece of friendly silicone and make your own stencils. If I want polka dots, I should be able to get polka dots, right? Now, let's take a look what all this can do for us. to making your own homemade texture plates. But that will have to be another video. Yeah, and perhaps we should also talk about how to bend it without losing the print. So here are already two reasons for you to subscribe and stay tuned. So until next time, go and make something.